Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. I'm the Roden Schwartz stand and I've got Richard here and Richard's going to tell us about some cool stuff he's got. What have, what have we got? This looks like a sexy little Haymeg. So this is basically, yeah, Haymeg now is a Roden Schwartz company. Yep. The beauty of it is we bought them and we now make them in the Roden Schwartz factories. So right. Roden Schwartz quality, which is really excellent. Um, new range was actually launched, nah, it was launched next week, right. officially in Australia. Um, Family starts with a 70 meg two channel up to 200 meg four channel, uh, which is and that's the 100 meg variant. Um, really cool MSO ready. Yep. Um, basically, if you want the mixed signal option, you buy the Logic Pro. Yep. If you don't want the mixed signal option, you don't buy the Logic Pro. All right. That's it. A couple of little wrinkles. There's a component tester built in for those guys who want it. Yes, my diode's working. No, it's not. Yep. which is really handy. It's really, it's and you know, basic 100 meg, 2 gig of sample, 2 megabyte um, memory, which is probably better than the industry standard. And it's right. pretty and cheap. It's, and it's neat and sexy. It's and small, tight. I it's like it. Nice it's one of the smallest ones in the market. Let's it take a actually. close up look at that. And uh, it's a really nice, small, compact unit. It's uh, In terms of width, it's uh, it's really quite small. It leaves a lot of space on the bench, actually. Yep. Oh, I like it. Mm. Yeah, it's neat. Nice, nice so you said these are made in the uh, made in the Roden Schwartz factories now. Where uh, the, the hay mags not made in Germany anymore? It's actually made in the Czech Republic. Czech Republic now. We're made in okay. uh, our, the Roden Schwartz factory in Wimper in the Czech, Czech Republic. Right. So still EU. Yep. Um, but. You know, we use that factory for our military radios. Yep. We use it for some of our transmitters, so high reliability. Yep. But the technology level is a little bit lower than, say, some of the real-time analyzer stuff that we do in the Roden Schwartz factory in Memory, for example. So, um, yeah. But Roden Schwartz quality system, Roden yep. Schwartz factory. Nice. It's what you want, right? I like it. And how much is this uh, retailing in Australia for? Top of my head, it's um, well under two grand. We aimed at that development EMC world, right. right? The EMC pre-compliant sort of market. Pretty yep. much, and Roden Schwartz is very strong in the EMC market. We go all the way up to fully compliant military standard systems. Yep. If you want to test a Eurofighter, yep. we'll give you the chamber and the amps and the whole lot. Excellent. Okay. Nice. But you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, other bits and pieces. So this is the top of the Hamid scope run. Yep. Right? Uh, 350 meg. Four channel, and as you can see, four gig samples per second, two meg of, uh, of memory. Then again, the MSO options are already here. Yep. 16 channels, digital, and again, it's just two of the probes. It's the only thing you need. So there's no price uptick to get a mixed signal oscilloscope. Got it. You just buy the probes, right? The real trick with these is this is the lowest noise oscilloscope in its class by an order of magnitude. Order of magnitude. Order of and it's a big claim. I'm quite happy big to prove claim. it. Quite happy to prove it. Yeah, right. um, one of the interesting things with these is that we go down to one millivolt per division, like yep. most scopes yep. in that range do. The interesting thing about this one is that at one millivolt per division, it's not a zoom. Right. Some of our competitors. It's a true. Yeah, yeah. They put and in it's the not times a, five mag. And it's not bandwidth limited either. It's right. Oh, it's full bandwidth. It's 500 megahertz, one millivolt per division. Okay, I'm and impressed. it's the only one that does it that way. I was going so to say, depending yep. on which one of the competitors, they either do one or the other. Yep, yes they do. So we don't. Yep, right. okay, um, excellent. So very, very low noise front end, um, and, it, and it basically it needs to be because we designed it that way. Right. Um, Brilliant. And that then, wouldn't come cheap, I'm assuming. Um, I think they start about seven, go to about 11 okay. or 12, something yep. like that. They're not so it's a, it's a mid-range. It's Pretty a mid -range. much. I mean... 500 mega oscilloscopes, range. they're a, they're a yeah. commodity product, there's a market price for them, they're yep. all about the same price, ours is about the same price. Right. And that's nice. really, that's the point, it's, yep. it's a, they're a commodity scope, so, but it's a really nice one. Um, so why why the acquisition of Haymeg, what's the story? There's actually a I funny little, it's a funny little story, Mr Hartman, as I understand it, the founder of Haymeg was an employee of Roden Schwartz, right. early on in the piece, Right. and when he retired, he was... 90-ish. No one in his family wanted to continue the business. So oh. he rang the old family connection and said, would you like to buy my business? Ah, nice. And at the same time, Roden Schwartz was looking at a lower cost 
possibilities yep. to broaden our market footprint, right. reach more of the market, and it was a, it's a natural fit. Right? Um, obviously, there's some changes in the way Hamag is engineered. Mm -hmm. It's now engineered yep. by Roden Schwartz, if you like, but there will always be a price separation. Right? So right. there's a level below which it'll be Hamag and above which it'll be Roden Schwartz. Is there, are there still products manufactured in the Hamig factories? No, the Hamig factory's actually been closed down. Right. The Hamig development group is still uh, main housing where it's always been. Right. So that group hasn't been closed down, but production was moved, as I said. But they have moved production now. But basically, you know, it enabled us to get Hameg into a higher quality production environment yep. with actually no additional cost. We didn't have to build a new factory. Got it. No. Nice. There was some pain. Right. Well, they moved production, but it was worth it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, the the warranty rate and the dead on arrival rate of Hameg is the same as Roden Schwartz. Yep. It's less than half of a percent. Nice. Dead on arrival. But this is the top end of our oscilloscope range as we speak. Um, two gigahertz, ten giga samples per second. Um, headline number is a million waveforms a second acquisition. Right. Right. Um, the really tricky point is though that even if we're doing a mass test, that drops only to 700,000. Right, because there's a lot of hardware, pro no, it's hardware processed Basically, software. Yeah. So Essentially hardware processed. It's pretty much all hardware. So the real-time controller, ASIC, which is some 30 million gates worth of Roden Schwartz specific silicon, yep. is handling three DVDs a second worth of data to do that sort of processing rate. Nice. So there's a lot of data crunching that goes on in the background. And, you know, there's a lot of things in the MMI that were sort of kind of built to make life easy, right? So we've got a, a two megahertz signal with FM and AM on it, as you can see. Mm -hmm. We've got our FFT going on in the back end. We've got a couple other channels you can see on the right hand side, a little thumbnails, right? So if you had a control line that you wanted to monitor in the back end, you can just see the thumbnail. Right? Right. But if you actually want to say, well, you know what, I want to have a look at it. Yeah. And you can just drag That's it. That's a nice there. user interface, I've got to admit. Yeah. And then, then you've got the, the channel set up is still in your thumbnail. But you can see the signal on you, you say, oh, I want that one. Well, actually, no, I want it there. Yep. You just put it wherever you want, okay? But if you don't want it anymore, you just take it away. Yep. Right? And you can do the same with the math functions. You can do the same with any of the channels. Mm -hmm. And when the mix signal option comes out, yep. which is a plug-in that goes in the back. Right, it's in the back. Yep. So, again, you don't have to buy a mix signal oscilloscope. You can buy this one and upgrade it as you need. That'll be in the, in the phone, same user interface, right? And again, very, very low noise front end. Right. The front end of this is actually designed to run to 18 gigahertz, even on the two gig system. Right. So again, very, very low noise, very high effective number of bits. Yep. Very, very fast. Sweet, and what OS does that run, do you know? It is running... Vista embedded. <laughs> Vista oh, embedded? 7 embedded. Windows 7, 7 embedded. embedded. Right, Windows 7 embedded. Yeah. And so some of the other things about the MMI that are a little bit... No, I don't want that one. Sorry. I want this one. And how long does it take to boot? Big question. 3 to 5 minutes. 3 to 5 minutes, yeah. Okay, it's not as quick as you might want. Mm -hmm, yeah. But at the end of the day, to do this sort of display processing, to have the data interfaces, the printer drivers, and all the other ins and outs that you need in a modern instrument, you either have to write it yourself, you have to use Linux, yeah. which is what we do in the generators, yeah. or you end up with the smallest possible version of Windows you can run. Yep. And that's what that is. Right? And so, some other little tricks, right? The vertical channel setup, the vertical channel menu, gives you a picture of the vertical channel. That's how it yeah. works. You've got your probe setup. It's brilliant. You've got, you go across to your channel setup, you've got your coupling, your vertical scaling, offsets, and then you go into the acquisition menu. That's how an oscilloscope works. And you can see exactly what it's doing. And you know, we can run multiple waveform views of the same data. Mm -hmm. And that one might be peak detect. That one could be, well, let's say that one's sample, but we actually want to look at the envelope of that sample. Okay? Excellent. And so we can see multiple data and say see the same data in multiple views. And you get a better feeling for what the waveform is actually doing. Nice. I like it. So, you know, that's the horizontal channel. No, that's the vertical channel. The horizontal channel does basically the same thing. The trigger channel, you know, you've got all, all of the fun, that finger error, all the fundamental trigger types. Mm -hmm. Basically everything that you want. The other important thing to note about this machine 
doesn't have an analog trigger system, it has a digital trigger system. Got it. So, trigger jitter is a function only of the clock jitter. Okay. The other thing is, there's no rearm time. Right. We don't have an analog yep. trigger circle, yep. and we just don't have to worry about trigger jitter because right. we're not trying to line up an analog trigger system with a digital acquisition system. Okay. So we can do a lot of things in triggering that very hard to do in analog. Right. Because we're basically looking at all that data in real time. With all this uh, information available on the screen, can you plug in a larger screen and get more real estate? Or is it there just is a, a mirror? There is a DVI-D. Right. But it's basically a mirror. It's a mirror, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have never seen an instrument. Neither have I. I think it would be brilliant. We actually have a long-standing request, yeah. and we had a discussion with the MMI engineers about it yeah. for this. The issue is, it's so touchscreen driven that if you split the discrete, of course. how do you drive it as a touchscreen? Yep. And you kind of lose a large chunk of the MMI functionality right. unless you've got a 25 inch touchscreen. Yep. Got it. And then you've you know, yep. added $4,000 to the price of, of the instrument. Yeah. Fair call. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Richard. My pleasure.